as I'm sure many of you can imagine, doing what I do, I'm logged into a lot of servers for a lot of different people, fixing things, doing various different things. The first thing that I always ask every person before I log into their server is what kind of server are they using? Are they doing a local host type setup or are they paying a hosting provider? That is always followed up with what type of console or what type of management program are you using to control your server? Now, I know most host providers have some sort of built in console type system that is kind of most of the time usable, but they're not always the best. So my first suggestion, if they're not already using it, is to download, install and set up Rust Admin. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to say the same thing to you today. If you're not using Rust Admin and your hosting provider doesn't have a really good console system, you need to go download Rust Admin and then follow along with this tutorial so that you know exactly how to set it up. And I'll go over a couple of the different features of it. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your servers to make your server stand out from the crowd. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. All right, if you haven't yet, go to rustadmin.com and it's gonna take you to a page that looks just like this, what you're seeing on my screen right now. Now, Rust Admin has two different options. One of them is free, which is exactly what we're gonna go over today. The other one is subscription-based. Now, why would you ever want a subscription-based console that you can use to manage your server with? There are a number of reasons, and I fully encourage you to go through the different reasons that they have listed on the website. However, that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about the free version. So the free version of Rust Admin is a downloadable application, downloads right to your desktop, and sets up just like any other program that you've ever set up on your computer. Click on the download button, it's gonna prompt you to either don't Donate. You don't necessarily have to, but if you're going to donate, I would suggest instead of donating it straight up, just get into the subscription platform instead. So let's click on this download button right here. It's going to download a zip folder onto our desktop. Once you have that file downloaded to your desktop, of course, you just want to extract it to wherever it is that you want it to be. You're actually going to run it from that location. So put it somewhere where you're going to remember where it is. I suggest putting it on your desktop. Once you've extracted your zip folder, you're going to end up with a folder that looks just like this. Again, you're going to want to remember where you place this folder. And then we just want to run rustadmin.exe. And this is what you're going to end up with once the program is actually up and running. So obviously this right here by itself does absolutely nothing for us. We need to do some configuration in order to assign it so that it knows that it's talking to our server. So over on the right hand side of these menus right here, you can click on the configuration. This is going to take you to a section where you can apply your server's credentials and save it to a profile so that you can quickly access this information later. So on the bottom left hand corner here, I'm just going to click on new configuration that blanks everything out because in my case, I had previous servers on here. If this is the first time you're running Rust Admin on your system, obviously you won't have any preset configurations or anything like that in there. So this is really quite simple to operate and it's incredibly simple to set up. Obviously we need our server IP address, server port, archon port, and archon password. All of that information is defined in your batch file if you're a local host type scenario, or if you're on a hosted system, a lot of times that information is pre-generated for you, but it's still readily available from your dashboard of the hosting provider. So I'm just gonna quickly grab this information from my test server, I'm going to put it in these fields and then we're going to get on to the next step. Once you have all those fields filled out, there are a couple of important details that a lot of people actually miss. So at the top here, you're going to see legacy, experimental and web archon. Now, nobody should ever be using legacy anymore because legacy isn't even really a thing. Experimental and web archon. Those are the two options that we can address right now. To be totally honest with you, you shouldn't even be using experimental. I'm sure we're going to get to a point where experimental is no longer supported anyways. So you should just get in the habit of using web archon. But in order to use web archon, you actually have to have that CVAR defined in your batch file. So if we just have a look at my test server hosted by IceHost, you can see this line right here, this plus archon.web, and then it says true after that. You can also use web archon one, one being true, zero being false. So you want to make sure that you have this CVAR in your startup file, and then you'll be able to connect to your server using Rust Admin on the web archon setting. Now, this is the part that most people miss. They set up Rust Admin and they can't figure out how to get logged in, so they end up giving up on it and they never go back to it ever again. That is a huge mistake. I want you guys to be able to use these tools that are readily available to you and free. Everyone should be using this, providing of course that your host doesn't already have an awesome console system built in for you. So just make sure you have archon.web set to true or archon web set to one, and then you'll be good to go. Now there's two more things that we need to cover before we're actually finished with our configuration. One is actually setting up an account with Rust Admin. Now, why would you ever want to do that? If you have an account set up with Rust Admin, you can actually 
share the bands that you apply on your server with the rest of the Rust admin community. So if that player happens to leave your server after they're banned and they go to another server that's also monitored by Rust admin, that owner will be able to see the ban that you applied plus the reasoning for it. And then of course they can make the decision for themselves whether they want to apply that ban on that server as well. Totally up to them, but at least you've done your part to help weed out the cheaters in the game. And now the reason for setting up an account, if you do decide to switch from the free version to the subscription version, you're going to need to have an account set up anyways, so that you can associate your servers with your username and use the online version of Rust admin. The other section that we need to deal with before we can actually start playing around with this is your Steam API key. If you don't have a Steam API key, you can click on this blue button right here, and it's going to take you a page to where you can actually apply to get one. If you have a domain name, obviously just enter in that domain name right there. Click on the check mark right here that says, I agree to the Steam Web API terms of use, which of course we do, and we're going to follow those to a T. And then just click on register. It's going to spit out a Steam API key that you can then transfer over into Rust Admin, finish your setup, and then continue to log in. Now, why do you need to use a Steam API key? The long and short of it is when you have your Steam API key entered into Rust Admin, it allows you access to more information that you can get for a specific player than if you didn't have your Steam API key in there at all. So can you run Rust Admin without a Steam API key? Yes, of course you can, but it's free and it only takes a second to set it up if you don't already have one. And I think some of you are going to be surprised. You're going to find out that you do actually have a Steam API key already registered. You just don't know that you have it and you probably don't even know why you have it. It feels like I just said Steam API key like a thousand times right there. All right, so we're using the web Archon connection style. We have all of our server credentials set in there, including our Archon password. We're using our login and password for the Rust admin website that we've already set up an account for. Plus, we're going to use our Steam API key, which I'm putting in right there. And we're going to save this configuration as a new configuration. I'm going to call this one YouTube test. All right, so configuration saved. Everything's good to go. And then in the top left hand corner, we click on the server button and then we can click on connect. You'll see in the bottom left hand corner there. I don't know. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. It says connected in green. That means you're good to go. That means Rust admin is connected to your server and actually communicating with it. All right, so let's just go over a couple of really broad strokes of the things that I use Rust Admin for. And once you're actually connected to Rust Admin, you can click on the chat tab right there, which is gonna be the default page that you're gonna to come to. This obviously just monitors the chat, what's going on in your server. And it's real time, like you can you can, you can can type and it's going to monitor just like it would if you were watching the console, because essentially that's what we're reading is the chat in console. Now, one of the benefits of this is you're actually, what you're seeing on my screen right now is team chat. So you're not seeing what the public sees, you're seeing what's actually being discussed within a team. If I switch back to global, you can see that it actually specifies that it's no longer team chat, that it's what they call it general, but it's global chat. Now the oxide tab is from what I can tell, it's not really used for anything anymore. But if we go down to console, you can actually see everything that's going on in the console that you might not have access to if your host provider doesn't give you a good console. This is the page that I normally have my Rust admin set to, and this is where I monitor everything that's going on in my servers. And then down at the very bottom of the screen, we have a chat box where we can chat directly with players in the server. So when you send a message from that chat box, it looks like this admin slash server, blah, blah, blah. And then whatever message you put out there. And then of course we have a command execution line where we can execute commands that we would normally use in console. We can do it directly from Rust admin. And that can be anything you want, whether that's built in Rust commands, or if you actually want to use Oxide commands, you can do that as well. So we can just reload all the plugins just like that. It's just a command line for your console. So make sure when you mean to be sending a command that you're actually in the command line. And when you want to be chatting with your server, you're actually using the chat line. You can, of course, still use the say command in the command line, and it will utilize that as well. It feels like I'm getting a little bit too specific on stuff like that. So let's move on. So if we move on to the next tab, we've got our players tab. And this is another really important tab that you're going to utilize quite often. This is where you can actually see all of the information about the players that are connected to your server and actually the sleepers too. The top section is everyone that's online. The bottom section down here are the people that have been on your server previously and are currently disconnected. And you get all of the basic information that you're going to need. You're going to get their Steam 64 ID, the country that they're connecting from, their name, the number of game bands, the number of VAC bands, all of these things that you need to know about these players. And for those that are wondering, yes, this is me. And yes, these numbers are accurate. If we move over to the next tab, this is our band section. So this is pulling information from your bands.cfg. So any player that you've previously banned on your server, it's going to show you that information here right now. This shared band section is what I was talking about 
earlier that one of the benefits of actually setting up an account with Rust Admin is you can share these bands with the rest of the community. So if I had a band here, I could show you that I could toggle on whether this is shared with the community or not. There's so many different things that I could be showing you guys about this application. I actually don't even know where to start. If we go back to the console tab on the far left hand corner, you'll see on the right hand side of the screen here, we've got a couple of different boxes that we can actually scroll through and see a bunch of information. So you'll see in this section right here, this is called scheduled commands. So we can actually schedule Rust Admin to execute different commands for us at various different times using various different triggers. So this can be really helpful for setting up things like restart timers to automatically restart your server at a specified time, or like, let's say restocking vending machines, something like that. You can set it up so that it's fully automated. It's not something that you have to manually do anymore. So a really great example of what not to do. I actually just clicked on this reset button next to animals, resources, and collectibles. And let me just show you what it actually did to my server. So it legitimately deleted all of the trees. These ones have started to respawn back in, but literally all of the resources, all of the trees, all of the ore nodes, and all of the animals have all been removed. And I'll be totally honest with you, it actually kicked me for packet flooding. So obviously that was a very resource heavy command that I just executed on my test server. Sorry about that. But as you can see, it reset all of the items naturally spawn on my server. So I don't know why that capability is there, but it's there and it works. Actually, quite often you'll see an animal that spawns somewhere or ends up somewhere on your map that the server doesn't think it should be there. So actually having the ability to reset the animals at the click of a button it actually might be helpful for a lot of people. If you've never seen it before and it ever happens on your server, you're going to see it says like chicken is stuck in the mesh or something like that. And being able to reset the animals, that would be helpful. So as you can see, this is a very powerful tool and I highly suggest that if you're not using Rust Admin that you definitely get started. I'm not going to go through all of the different features of it because there's just way too much stuff to go through. But use this video to familiarize yourself with the layout of it, how to log in, how to set up a configuration. Anyways, as you guys can tell, I speak very highly of Rust Admin. I used to use this program all the time back in the day before I was with my sponsored host company that I'm with now that has a very efficient console built into it. So I don't really use Rust Admin so much anymore unless I'm logging into another client or, you know, one of my Discord members or something like that. This makes it super easy for me to log into their server and help them out with whatever it is that they're working on. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave me a big thumbs up and leave me some comments in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Remember, I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until then, I hope you're all making good choices and I'll see you next Friday.